Hi, in this video, we are going to demo the new AI model scale where you take a reference image and a control video and your output is your reference image animated by the movements in your control video. Scale is very similar to the also recently released model Steady Dancer where you can animate a full character and they're really good with dance videos. But the real benefit of scale is you can have multiple characters moving. And if a body part of one character blocks the body part of another character, it all makes sense. As we see here with the bear in front of the dog there, the movements look realistic. This is known as occlusions and the scale model handles them very nicely. It's also worth comparing scale to one animate because one animate can animate full bodies as well. And where one animate still shines above the scale and study dancer is one animate can do great mouth movements and facial expressions, whereas the scale authors in their paper discuss how that is future work that they would like to do to get accurate and high fidelity facial expressions and hand movements. Here we can see the difference between how the two models perform. Uh, so you want ceremonial grade much? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Jim, <laughs> this guy, he wants ceremonial, no, stop, ceremonial grade much. Another thing to note about the model is it is in its preview phase, so it will likely get better and it was trained mostly on human videos of human dancing and athletics but despite that i could not get a video that i really loved with a human face maintaining consistency and detail whereas the multi-character animated videos were really impressive so let's dive in and generate a video i'm going to be running on an rtx 5090 in runpod if you don't know how to get going on runpod i have a separate video i will link to for that or you can use whatever environment you prefer so we are here in WANDP. i'm going to go over to configuration and change the attention type to sdpa because the RTX 5090 template that I'm using RunPod does not work well with Sage Attention. So just make sure you save and apply those settings if you're doing the same thing. And then we're going to go over to WAN 2.1 Scale 14B Preview. Then we're going to select the Light X2V 4-Step LoRa. And this hit Apply. And then this will change the configuration so that it will set 4 steps, set the proper CFG, etc. It makes it super easy. It will download the LoRa for you. And I got the best results from using the Light X2V preset. I'll show you a comparison against Fusion X and the Thought Alora later. So now we're going to drag in our reference image. You want it to be the same dimensions as your control video and your output dimensions. Here we're doing 9 by 16. Then you want to select the number of characters you're animating. Here we're doing one, but you can select up to five. And then for your control video, you can use the whole frame of the control video. So take all of the character movement from that or if you just want to use a mask you can mask it we're going to just have one character moving and have the whole frame transfer the movement for scale preview the prompt actually really matters and the creators of this model actually created a python script that calls the gemini model to help you write the prompts and really all the script does is it tells the model here's a picture here's a video describe what's in the video describe what's in the picture now create a prompt that takes the action from the video and applies it to the character in the image. So instead of calling Gemini, I just use my own artificial intelligence to create a prompt describing our character here and the action. A Pixar style animated polar bear dances. He is in a photorealistic scene on a sidewalk with a park in the distance. For other videos, I had to elaborate further depending on how well the output turned out, especially with human faces, I would take the reference image and feed it to ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever and, and have it prepare a really detailed prompt describing the eyes, the nose, whatever, so that we would at least have a chance of some face consistency and detail. The scale preview was trained at 512p, so I use 540p to keep it close. And then we are doing a 9x16, just like our reference image and control video. And then for frames, we are just doing a quick 3 seconds control video, so 3 times 16 is 48. And then because we already selected that preset Laura, our step counts our guidance etc are all good the only thing we want to do here is use rife post processing to up our final output frame rate since we are using a 16 fps control video speaking of fps scale is not as sensitive to frame rate as i noticed steady dancer is with steady dancer i had to feed it an actual 16 fps control video or i got horrible results with scale you can give it a 30 fps 24 fps and it'll still work fine but the video quality suffers over time with scale and the sliding window sometimes the glitches so you want 
a lower frame rate so you can get more seconds of video at higher quality. So no matter what your input control video frame rate is, I do recommend setting the model override at 16 FPS. If you already have a 16 FPS control video, it doesn't matter, but for higher frame rates, setting that will help. And then we can click generate. This model is pretty fast. This is the first time I'm running it on this machine, so it is going to download the model and the LoRa's will take a bit longer, but we see that it does generate after it's downloaded the model, this pose map, and we see it's a little different than the usual 2D pose map that's 3D, and that's what helps with those occlusions where you can have one arm that is in front of another arm and it works out correctly rather than merging things and getting weird movement. And it completes in about four minutes. If the model had already been downloaded, it probably would have only taken about two minutes on this RTX 5090. And here we see the impact of those 3D pose maps with a full turnaround that looks pretty good compared to the Steady Dancer that gets completely messed up. And then here's a comparison without Allura with Fusion X and Light X2V. Without Allura, it probably needs even more than 30 steps. It took so long and I wasn't getting good results. And then for Fusion X, I noticed that I would get discoloration faster in the videos than I would with Light X2V. And if I wanted to do a longer video, Light X2V worked better. Speaking of longer videos, the scale preview is not ideal for longer videos. I was able to create this 11 second video and it worked out pretty well until around the 11 second we see some real discoloration at the end there and i saw people in the discord complaining about the longer videos and the sliding windows looking very jerky between windows if you are having that issue you can go under advanced settings sliding window and increase the frame overlap between sliding windows i didn't notice that that improved things much but it's worth a try if you're getting particularly bad sliding windows and then for your reference images i noticed that your characters don't have to be the exact size or in the exact position as they are in the control video but having them somewhat in the same position helps for instance with this video it just created new characters out of nowhere because the reference characters were so much smaller than the people in the control video. So I fixed that with this reference image and the results improved. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.